Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm going to show you how to use creative color grading to absolutely change the light in Photoshop. To achieve this, we will use an interesting combination of curves to create the light and masking to shade the light. Now, I would highly recommend a pressure sensitive tablet like Wacom to control the flow of light using the pressure in your hand. So as you paint the light and you move away from the light source slowly and gradually, all you have to do, you have to just gradually decrease the pressure in your hand to create a natural flow from bright to dark. It makes it so much more easier. Also, we'll learn a special blend mode to light things up beautifully. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now I have great news for you. Since a lot of you guys requested, we have made notes for this tutorial for you to follow along very easily. So you can access the notes for this tutorial using this link. These notes are absolutely interactive with all the images and the assets showing what to do at every step. You can even download these sample images right from the notes. And if you want, you can totally export the notes as PDF or PNG and print it out as well. Back in Photoshop and the first step is creating the atmosphere. So in this scene, we are trying to create a time after the sunset. So there's not complete darkness. There's still a little bit of light in the sky. And how do we do that? By using a curves adjustment layer. Now, we are also trying to create the light coming out of the flower. So keep that in mind. So all we need to do is to create a curves adjustment layer by going to adjustment layer button. Just click on that button and let's choose curves. Now in the curves, let's go one by one. So the RGB channel controls what? The brightness, right? So let's just zoom in. Now, we want the sky to be dark. Now the sky is the brightest part of the image and therefore we need to take the highlights down. Now where are the highlights? Highlights are on the right hand side and the shadows are on the left hand side. So take the highlights down just like that. Let's zoom out quite a bit and let's place the image here, right? Probably something like this is fine. Maybe I'll create a point a little bit on the shadows as well and make them even darker. Now the sky will be a little bit bluish, right? Because just after the sunset, there's a lot of blue in the sky. Now we need to go to the blue channel, click on the adjustment layer icon and select blue. Now I'm talking about a time where the sun is completely down. You just cannot see the sun. It's absolutely gone. Maybe half an hour or an hour after the sunset. So let's take the blues up in the highlights. This much is fine. Also, we want a little bit of blues in the shadows as well. So it would look something like this. Have a look at the before and after. We are already creating that atmosphere. So here's the before, here's the after. Now let's move to other channels and we'll start with red. So click on the drop down and let's choose reds. So we will take the reds down in the highlights because that will bring up cyan, right? Let's take the reds down. See the cyan, the sky is looking more natural and for that time, Beautiful, not so much, just a tad bit. This looks fine. Now let's move to the green channel and we'll take the greens down because that will add magenta to the image. That will make the magenta show up. This is fine. Let's take the green down and the shadows as well. Keep in mind, magenta is the opposite of green. Yellow is the opposite of blue and cyan is the opposite of red. So decreasing reds will bring up cyan and so on and so forth for the other channels. So we are in the moment. We have created the moment, but we don't want the darkness on our subject. So we will use the power of masking to take away the darkness from the areas around the flower. So keep in mind, flower is the source of light in this case. So simply just zoom in and this is where you would need a pressure sensitive tablet. So all you need to do Make sure the mask is selected for the curves adjustment layer and you can name it atmosphere. And then with the mask selected, take the brush, make sure the foreground color is black. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Decrease the flow to somewhere around 10% and then increase the opacity to 100%. Now change the brush to this one soft round pressure opacity and flow. So the pressure of the pen will control the opacity and flow of the brush. The harder I press, the more opaque it will be. The softer I press, the more transparent it will be. Now, if you're using a mouse, if you don't have a tablet, you can use 
the soft round brush and make sure you decrease the flow even lower to maybe 2% or something. It's going to take you more time. Plus, it might not be that natural flow, but it will get your job done. Let's go ahead and select the soft round pressure opacity and flow. If you don't have this brush, simply set flow and opacity to pen pressure in brush settings. All right, let's just collapse that and just start painting from the light source. Let's make the brush a little bigger and I'm going to press harder over here. And as I move away, I'm going to press softer. Make sure your brush is soft. Always first start with the light source, then we'll move to other areas. Now the light would fall on her face. So we'll make the brush a little bigger and we'll go from pressing harder to softer from bottom to top. See the flow of light here? Here's the before, before creating the mask and after creating the mask. Now let's create some light on her hair as well. Make sure the light doesn't go out of the subject. So if you paint a little extra outside, you can always change the foreground color to white by pressing X and then paint it away. Maybe I've painted a little too extra so you can increase the flow and just take it out once and for all. Let's make sure the flow is again at 10%. Let's get back to this. Make sure it's black foreground color. Great. Now let's paint these areas. Always keep the shadows in mind as well because if the light is over here, below her hand will be shadow. So don't paint over there. A little bit of the light will be here, just a touch. Now let's paint the highlights that would fall on the fingers. So paint on only the areas which are facing the light. Have a look at this. This portion of the finger is not facing the light. So you don't have to paint so hard on this one. Paint very light or don't paint at all. But this surface is facing the flower directly. So paint intensely on that area. Now at the end, you can also take a soft brush and just paint on top of it to create some softness. Now, as you can see, we have removed the darkness from most of the areas. Take a break and get back to the image. There might be some areas that you have missed. So as I get back to the image and as I look back, there are indeed some areas. Maybe I'll just paint a little more here. Maybe here as well. All right, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little more on the face. Okay, that looks great. Now have a look at the complete before and after. So here is the before, here is the after. Moving to the next step. Step number two is creating warm highlights. And there's not one way to do it. There's a ton of ways and you can use whatever is your favorite. I'm just going to show you my favorite and maybe that will give you some ideas. So. I'm just going to create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now we are creating highlights, right? So we're going to take it up. First of all, let's zoom in on the subject. Let's take the highlights up. Click a point on the right hand side of the curves adjustment layer and take it up to make it brighter. Now keep in mind, we're going to mask it out and paint on only selected areas. So don't worry about it. So we're going to take it up. Maybe we'll take this a little bit to the left to create extreme highlights. That looks fine. And maybe we can also create some contrast by taking the shadows a little down, just like so. All right. Now in the highlights, we want a little bit of yellow color. Why? Because it's a warm highlight and the light is coming from a warm source, right? So we'll go to the blue channel, click on the drop down and let's go ahead and choose blue. Yellow is the opposite of blue. So let's decrease blue in the highlights. Simply decrease it and you will introduce yellow. Have a look at this. Have a look at the highlights before, after. There's a lot of yellow in the highlights and that comes by decreasing the blues. Now let's go to the red channel. It's a warm highlight, so more red. Increase the reds in the highlights. Maybe we'll take this to the left. Increase it and let's go to the green channel. Now in the highlights, how about we increase the green? It doesn't look right. If we decrease the green, we bring up some magenta. It looks really good. So we'll just decrease it a bit from here as well. That kind of looks great. Now, once you're happy with this, all you have to do is this. Select the mask, 
and then press Ctrl or Command I to invert the mask. Now take the brush and make sure the foreground color is white this time. Press X to toggle between the foreground and the background. Let's collapse it. And similarly, you would take the same 10% soft round pressure opacity and flow, same brush, and let's start painting the highlights, extreme highlights, with white as the foreground color. In this case, maybe I'll just increase the flow to about 30% because we want more power. Now, if you're using a mouse, you would want to keep it at maybe 5% or something. All right, so we have some light here. Let's do it around the jawline. That looks good. Let's do the fingers because they are closest to the source of light. That looks beautiful. Let's have a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here's the after. Now, we are going to do one more setting to this, but just wait. We need to paint a couple more areas as well. So let's paint over here a little bit on her arm to make sure that there's a little highlight in there. Great. That looks wonderful. Maybe not. Now, what if we could say to Photoshop, hey, Photoshop, just limit the light to the bright areas. And we can do that by using Blend If. Double click on the right hand side of the Curves Adjustment layer. second one. The Layer Styles dialog box will show up. All you need to do is to take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right, just like that. And it will limit the light just to the bright areas. Now it's very harsh at the moment. So all we need to do is to hold the Alt or Option and click on the slider to break it apart. And then you control it the way you want. So I'm gonna keep it like this and it gives it a much more natural feel. Maybe I'll take it a little more to the right. If you want, you can also take the left slider to the right to take it away from the dark areas. It completely takes it away. That works nice. And once you're satisfied, always hit OK. Easy, right? So before, after, we have created some beautiful highlights which are warm. Now, we also need some highlights for the hair as well. Because it's dark, we need to do it separately. So let's create one more Curves Adjustment layer. Click on the Adjustment layer icon and let's choose Curves. And this time, just take it up, just like this. Too much brightness. Now, let's go to the blue channel and decrease the blues to bring up some yellows. And that's fine. You don't need to add reds. This doesn't have to be so much more colorful highlight here because we have already done that. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now simply take the brush and then flow you can increase to 100%. And you can also choose the soft round brush. Pressure sensitivity is not needed in this case. So make the brush a little bigger and just dab on the hair just like that, on the areas that you think there would be shine. This is fine. And here as well, right here and right there. Now we need to take away the excess because we have also painted on our face and some other areas as well. So simply press X to make the foreground color black and paint away the excess. All right, now we will do the same thing. Double click on the right hand side of the layer and then take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. Hold the Alt or Option, click on it to break it apart. And subtle hair highlights. There you go, hit OK. And have a look, here's the before, here's the after. We have created some hair highlights. There's some excess leakage. So select the mask, take the brush, black color again, just paint that away. There you go. Now when I look at it, I think this highlight is too much on the face. So just click on the mask, very easy. And with black as the foreground color, Flow, decrease it to 10% again. And you can again select the brush, which is soft round, pressure, opacity, and flow. Select that brush and paint it away from the face. All right, there you go. Let's have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Maybe let's take it away from the face. Keep in mind that you can always revisit the older mask. So if you feel that there's been less light on the forehead, you can always revisit the old atmosphere mask and you can just fix it up. With black as the foreground color, just fix it up. It's no big of a deal. Just like that. If you need, if you feel that I should have painted more light over here, you can just fix it up. And that is the power of working non-destructively. Now let's create some extreme highlights for the areas directly facing the source of light. For example, the nose will be a little more highlighted, maybe a little bit of the lips, so on and so forth. So let's create one more curves adjustment layer. 
and take it up like that and maybe if you want you can also take down the blues to add some yellow to it now with the mask selected press ctrl or command i and then simply take the brush 10 and then paint in the areas that you think would be more highlighted with white as the foreground color Have a look at the difference before, after. You have painted some extra highlights and I think they need a little more yellow. We'll go to the blue channel and we'll take down the blue a little bit to add some yellow to them. All right, they look fantastic. So here's the before, here's the after for some extra highlights. Now that we have the highlights in place, I would like to make the atmosphere a little darker. So let's go back to the atmosphere. Let's make it even darker. And let's go to the red channel and add more cyan to it. It adds a little more contrast between the subject and the background. Now that we have created overall highlights, highlights for the face, it's time for us to create highlights for her eyes. So let's zoom in and at the top again, we need to create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and curves again. And this time again, take it up a little too much unless you can see the details in the eyes. So you have to like take it a lot and then let's go to the blue channel. You know the routine. Take it down to add more yellow to it. Now select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now all you need to do, the old thing, simply take the brush, white as the foreground color and this time increase the flow all the way to 100 and select the soft round brush. Now just have to dab here, right there and dab here as well. Now we need to clean up the excess. Press X, black is now the foreground color and remove the excess. From the top as well, do the same over here. Now, obviously it's too much, so we will decrease the opacity, add a little bit of it. Have a look, it makes the world of difference. Here's the before, here is the after. If you want, you can also create a new layer, a blank new layer. Take the brush, foreground color, white, and then just zoom in and create a dot right here and create one more dot right here. That's it. And change the blend mode from normal to overlay. Have a look at the difference before, after, right? Makes a lot of difference. Now you can take an eraser and erase off the extras from here as well. And there you go. There you have created eye highlights as well. Now I think it's too much. So I'll simply decrease the opacity. Oh, see, I have some updates. Anyway, decrease the opacity here to somewhere about, let's go for 40. Fine. Now we have created all the highlights that we needed to. Now select the first one, the first one with the highlight and hold the shift key and select the last one which created the highlights. So all the layers with the highlights are now selected. Press Ctrl or Command G and name them highlights. Quite. Now again, what follows the highlights? Shadows, right? So obviously, step number three is creating the shadows. So again, create a curves adjustment layer. So it's all a game of curves. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now in this curves, we need to take it down because we are creating shadows. So simply click on the middle and take it down. Just like that. And you don't have to make any color changes for the shadows. Just this is fine. Now we need to select the mask. Let's take it a little up. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Now take the brush, flow at 10% and again, select the brush, soft, round, pressure, opacity and flow so that you can control the shadow with pen pressure. Now which areas of the face will have shadow? Let's understand that. First of all, let's create a new layer and let me just make you understand which areas might have shadow. So. As the light is coming from here, let me just increase the flow momentarily. So the light is coming from this direction. So this area will be highlight, but this area, there will be a little bit of shadow. This area, there'll, there'll be a little bit of shadow. And maybe this area of the lip, because it's just inside, the light is not directly falling on that area. Maybe this area will have a little shadow. And also the sides will have shadow. Now, along with the sides, keep in mind at the bottom of the hand, there's no light coming in. So this area will be in complete shadow darkness, this area as well, right? So let's work on those areas. 
turn this off, this is just for demonstration. Let's get back to the mask of the curves and make sure the foreground color is white and flow at 10%. There you go. Zoom in with a soft brush, just start painting in the shadows. Have a look, here's the before, here's the after. It makes such a big difference. Now it's a human tendency to go a little overboard. So refrain from that. And you can al always decrease the opacity if you find yourself doing too much. All right. Now here's the before, here's the after. Do you think it's too much? Maybe we'll decrease the opacity later. But right now it looks okay. Before, after. This looks pretty cool. All right. Now let's paint the sides. This looks all right. So here's the before, here's the after with the shadows. It does make a difference. All right. Now let's create a shadow beneath the hand. Now let's have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. I think I did a little excess over here. So simply change the color from white to black and just paint in a little bit remove the excess. So now here's the before, here's the after. They look super cool. Now again, I would ask you to take a break and get back to the image because again, I see something which I need to do. That is super cool. Now that we have created the shadows, we need to add some warmth to both highlights and shadows and there are lots of ways to do it. In this example, I'm going to use color lookup. First of all, let's name this layer shadows. All right. Now let's create a color lookup adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. Now you're going to choose one special one and that is edgy amber. Now let's add some amazing stylizing effects to the subject warmth. Like this is absolutely beautiful. But we are also losing colors which we don't want. So first of all, we need to mask it out. Select the mask of the color lookup adjustment layer and then press Ctrl or Command I. Now with the brush and the foreground color white, then again, you can again just paint on the bright areas. So paint on the bright areas of the subject and you can do it loosely. You don't have to be accurate in this case. So let's zoom out, paint properly, just on the bright areas. And there you go. Maybe you can also increase the flow all the way to 100 and absolutely paint right here. Now, all we need to do at this point is decrease the opacity. That's it. Let's decrease the opacity to somewhere around, let's say, 42 is fine. So here's the before, here's the after. Let's increase the opacity even more and see what happens. Maybe I like 48. Let's go for 48. That's fine. And you can name this warmth if you want to. All right. Moving on to the next step, step number four is adjusting the light. This is where we create contrast with a simple light. So let's create again, again, a curves adjustment layer and simply take it up. Nothing complex in this case. Simply take it up just a little bit. All right. Now with the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I. Take a big soft brush, flow at 100, opacity at 100, and you will have to select the soft round brush and just with white as the foreground color big brush, just dab over the source of light. That's it. Big brush. There you go. It adds a little more contrast. Now what we do, we double click on the right hand side of the layer and we take it away from the dark areas. Hold Alt or Option, click on the slider, break it apart and just limit it to the bright areas. Just like so. Turn it off, turn it on. You see the difference? Contrast. Now decrease the opacity. It's kind of too much just a touch of it, maybe even 30, just a touch. That's fine. Done. Just that. Now you can name this layer adjust. This is optional. I wanted to do it, so I did it. Moving on to the next step. This is one of my favorite techniques. And so step number five is creating the light source on the flower. We'll create a bright light. And how can we do that? If we do it on top of every layer, it won't look realistic. Let's do it just above the subject. So select the background layer. On top of that, we need to create a new layer. Click on the new layer button. Now, all you need to do, this is very simple. Take the brush, right? Make sure the foreground color is white and just 
create a ball of light. That's it. That's all you need to do. If you want, you can also decrease the flow, but I'm going to keep it at 100 with the soft round brush selected. I'm going to create a ball right in there with white. That looks beautiful. Beautiful ball. Maybe I'll extend it a little bit there. Now, to make it look realistic, all you need to do is this. Change the blend mode to color dodge. We have talked about this in a previous video with lots of other examples. You can watch it right here. Now, simply change it from normal to color dodge, right? Does nothing at this point. Now, double click on the right hand side of the layer and then check off transparency shapes layer. Now, have a look at it. It looks so realistic, right? Now, with the help of the move tool, you can actually move it. Now, press control or command T and you can make it bigger if you want to and make it bigger from this side, from this side as well. Wow, it does look amazing. Now, at this point, have a look. It's too bright, very bright. If you simply decrease the opacity, it, it would be very flat. But if you decrease the fill, it will control the projection. So if you zoom in and decrease the fill, see, it controls the projection of the light. So we're going to just increase it slowly and gradually. And we're going to stop at a point which looks fine to us. Maybe we'll go with 65. That's OK. Have a look at it. Here's the before. Here's the after. You can adjust the light, shape the light and move the light, do whatever you want. It's going to look amazing. You can also move it here or there. It's absolutely realistic. Let's move it back to its place and we are fine. The next step is optional. And so step number six is stylizing the image. If you want, you can do it. So at the top, you can do anything to stylize the image. Maybe color lookup, maybe curves, whatever is your favorite. I'm just going to delete this. This was just for demo. So at the top, let's create a curves adjustment layer. Again, now maybe you want to create a faded effect. So take the shadows a little up like this and maybe take the highlights down flat faded effect. Now let's go to the blue channel and bring up the blues in the shadows like this and take down the blues for the highlights. Maybe in the red channel you want to bring in the reds in the highlights and take it away in the shadows to add some cyan. Totally upon you whatever you want to do. So I've just added a simple stylization to the image. If you want you can add it. If you don't want just keep it at that. Now moving on to step number seven, which is compulsory and the most important step. And it is simply take a break and get back to the image later. Because most of the times we are so engrossed in the editing process that we miss out the important stuff. And then in haste, we just post it online. And then a day later, we look at it and you would be like, what the heck was I thinking? What the hell did I do? How did I miss that? So don't do it. Take a break, maybe drink a cup of coffee, whatever you like, chicken wings, ranch, whatever is your favorite. Take a break, maybe watch a movie and get back to it. Maybe next day you get back to it and you'll be able to see some mistakes that were overlooked. Time for us to do a quick little recap. It's very simple. Step number one, we create the atmosphere. Decide what atmosphere are you trying to create? What time is it? What is the atmosphere that you're looking for? How would the light look like? In this case, the light would come from the flower and in the atmosphere, we had a time after the sunset. After you have done the atmosphere, we need to create the highlights. Since the light is warm, we need to create some warm highlights. And we added overall highlights, then to the hair, then the eyes all separately. Why? Because all of these areas are of different brightness levels and they need different treatments. Different surfaces, different treatment, you get the idea. Now after that, we added some shadows. We simply added the curves adjustment layer, took it down and just painted the shadows. That's it. Now if your scene requires some warmth, you can also add some extra warmth as we did by using a color lookup adjustment layer. After that, we simply adjusted the light by adding a curves adjustment layer and adding a light around the source of light. A simple adjustment. And finally, my most favorite part and that was adding the source of light. That was fun. Just above the background layer, right? Before you added all those adjustments, create a white ball of light. That's it. On a new layer, white ball of light, change the blend mode to color dodge and double click on the right side of the adjustment layer. The layer styles dialog box 
will show up an uncheck transparency shape slayer. That's it. It will create a very realistic blown out highlight. Of course, you can control it by using the fill slider to control the projection. The next step is optional and that is stylizing the image. Now there are tons of ways to do it. You can use curves, color lookup adjustment layers, or maybe selective color, whatever you like, even gradient maps. And do not forget to do the most important step. And that one is take a break and get back to the image. You can change any setting, tweak anything. This was all done non-destructively. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix Imperfect free for everybody forever. Thanks a lot for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.